Hey guys, Humble Southpaw here. Today in this video, we're just going to go over what, what a Southpaw should be looking for when they are purchasing a firearm. This is not going to be dedicated saying, hey, these are my top 10 you know, handguns, or this is what you should be buying as a Southpaw, but rather what you should be looking at when you go into the gun store and asking questions, and also as you're, you're handling the gun, how it works for you, because really it's going to come down to personal things. You know, again, you know, when I worked at the range, it was, you know, we had a lot of people come in, they say, I want a Glock, and then all of a sudden, okay, and we would show them some other firearms, like a Smith & Wesson, or a SIG, and a Walther, and they go out and they shoot and all of a sudden, you know, they like this gun over that gun. The same way. I mean, they can come in and say, I want the Smith & Wesson, and then you show them a Glock, and they're like, wow, okay. So those things are going to be personal. You know, it's basically what feels comfortable in your hand, what you're able to control and manage, you know, especially when it comes to a micro-compact handgun. You know, there's some things you got to take into consideration, and the Honest Outlaw did a great review, and I'll put a link down to that uh, video where he just goes over some, I think it was like five things to consider when buying a micro compact. And honestly, I think he took a lot of slack for it because people thought he was bashing the micro compact, and he wasn't, but he was just giving people, everybody said how great they are, but he also said, you need to consider these factors, and, and you know, a big one is, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not, if you don't like it and you're not going to shoot it, it's going to sit in your your safe and it's not worth it. So, you know, that's definitely here. But this is what we're going to just go through. Our, you know, there's two things, and you're starting to see more and more of the uh, videos coming out, and people are saying, "Hey, it's ambidextrous." From here, from my perspective, being a southpaw, there are two types of ambidextrous. There's a fully ambidextrous, and then there's an ambidextrous handgun. And you're like, "Well, what's the difference?" Fully ambidextrous is it comes right out of the box, no no modifications needed. You know, like the Kimber Mako here, and all these firearms have been checked. They got uh, magazine blocks in them from barrel block, and of course the Canik here does have the barrel block in there, uh, just to appease the YouTube uh, algorithm and all that stuff. But this gun here comes fully ambidextrous. There is nothing, you got a slide stop, or slide lock on both sides and you have a magazine release that is fully functional from both sides. You don't have to do anything with it. Same thing here with the Ross Martin. So uh, there's a few other ones. The uh, FN 509C because they use the paddle. I think they switched to uh, mag release. Uh, HK has some firearms. The Walthers will have some firearms that are fully ambidextrous out of the box because they use the uh, mag release paddle system. Um, so that is what fully ambidextrous is to me. And then there's ambidextrous, and that means, you know, there's a modification, and it's basically the mag release. So like here, the Canik, it has a slide lock on both sides that's fully functional, but if you need to swap out, you're going to need, you know, if you want the mag release on this side for left-handed using your thumb, you're going to have to swap it out. So those are my two definitions. So there's fully ambidextrous and ambidextrous. So that's where we are with that. So basically the two things you're going to want to look for, again, as we mentioned, based on my definitions, you're going to want to find a, a gun that is fully, has a ambi slide lock. So that is not, that to me is non-negotiable. You know, I want a firearm that has a slide lock on both sides. Just for my safe, you know, especially when I'm dealing in a concealed carry or a self-defense situation and I have a, you know, malfunction with my firearm that I'm able to, without contorting my hands and, you know, maybe dropping my self-defense position to manage that, um, malfunction. I want to be able to, you know, be able to use that thumb, lock the slide back, be able to look and see what's going on with my firearm while I'm keeping that all in front of me in my workspace. So that is why I look for that. And it's interesting, I did a view, review, a video on, you know, reasons why South Pole are overlooked and I had the slide lock, slide release conundrum. And it's funny, I was at the GOA conference and I was talking to some of the vendors about my channel and what I'm looking at. And somebody said to me, he goes, yeah, well, do you know what John Browning called it? And I'm like, no, I didn't tell <laughs> off the top of my head, no. And he goes, it's a slide stop. So 
So I looked it up. And of course, when you click on the information, it takes it to his patent. So basically, he called this a slide stop. It's not a slide release. It is a slide stop. And we need to change the industry's uh, mindset to that. Because I think I talked to IWI, and I mentioned in my other video, you know, they felt you don't need a slide release in a self-defense situation in a micro-compact firearm. For left-handed, I do need an ambidextrous because I want to be able to lock that back. So that is one thing I want to look for. And like here, this is my uh, SIG 365XL. Um, I did not purchase this. I won this at, uh, at the range I was working at. They were running contests and this was, you know, the, the prize for winning that contest. I bought it based on all the hype. But for me, as a southpaw, it's not the greatest. But I also have, my family are all right-handed, so this would work well for them. But it doesn't. You could swap out the mag release, but there is no ambidextrous slide stop or slide lock. So this definitely, it's good. I'm not, I do not care for it as much, but I do definitely like the, the Kimber. I like my RM1C. I do love my Canics, you know, they just provide great functionality as a southpaw. So the other thing we're going to look at is you're just going to want to have that mag release and being able to either swap it out or have it functional on both sides right out of the box. Um, I have not had an issue with any of these uh, popping out the mags. People might say, well, is this in the holster? Is it going to depress? No, I haven't had an issue. I have not had a mag pop out because I hit the, uh, you know, in the holster or whatever in there. So to me, that's not a big issue. I've not seen an issue with that. Maybe some of you have, and I would love to hear that in comments below. So basically, those are what you're going to want to look for when purchasing a firearm. And basically, again, like I said, you're going to want to make sure it feels comfortable in your hand. You're going to want to make sure that you know, you like it, how it fires and all that stuff. So, you know, go from there. But these are what you really want to look for. And I'm trying, talking to, you know, I've talked to Smith & Wesson. I've talked to Taurus. And when you start talking about having that ambidextrous slide stop, slide lock, it, it clicks them. They understand it. But now it's just a matter of getting those engineers to, to be able to develop a gun to do that. You know, the new bodyguard that Smith & Wesson came out, we looked at that. And the way they designed it, there was no way to put a uh, ambidextrous slide lock on there. But great gun, I loved it. But it definitely really small, makes it harder to manipulate. But you know, they need to start thinking about how to design guns with that. And I know they say we're not a big market, but it's anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. So we are still a pretty, I would say we are a market. So to think about. All right, guys, I hope you found this uh, helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like the information I'm providing here from a South Pulse perspective, please uh, subscribe and definitely share, guys, and be safe.